Well, in the United States, there will be plenty of time later to contemplate the legacy of President Barack Obama. Right now, it's all about who will be the next president. Who can sue the, the legions of so-called angry voters? Well, those are the people, loud and angry, who are fed up with the political establishment. And it is a phenomenon that's being observed around the world from the U.S. to right here in Germany. But well, today in Berlin, the angry voter and big data were both the topic of discussion at the Telefonica base camp. Uh, it was a packed house inside this think tank for new ideas. More than 150 people turned out to hear an interesting talk with the chief scientist at YouGov, polling Doug Rivers and the campaign strategist and Obama campaign veteran Julius Fundelar. Julius, many of you know, is a regular guest here on the day when we talk about the race for the White House. Well, tonight, I am happy to welcome here at the big table Mr. Doug Rivers from YouGov. Doug, welcome to the day. Uh, you know, I had the pleasure of uh, moderating that conversation with you um, earlier today. You know, these are, are, are topics that speak to uh, Germans, French, South Africans, um, as well as Americans. When you, as a pollster, when you talk about the angry voter, who do you have in mind? Well, uh, first off, we have in mind the people supporting Donald Trump, uh, that uh, most Americans think that uh, Donald Trump is not qualified to be president, uh, is loose with uh, the facts. Uh, but there are uh, a bunch of voters out there who are so frustrated uh, that they're willing, to, uh, and they say they're willing to risk uh, e making things worse um, by voting for Trump mm -hmm. because they think he'll really shake things up. As a pollster, would you say that we are making progress in our ability to gauge, to, to, to poll the opinions and the, the probability of what people will do? Uh, well, polling is getting increasingly di uh, more difficult. The traditional methods like calling people on the phone uh, get fewer and fewer people willing to participate in polls. Uh, so we've moved to the internet uh, and have come up with methodologies that have given uh, accurate results in the 2008, uh, 10, 12, and 14 U.S. elections. Uh, we did have a miss in the British elections in 2015, but mm -hmm. we came back and uh, were among the few people to consistently have Brexit winning. Yeah, you've got a good record, and and I guess you're not using the, the I guess, the phone call method anymore. We were saying earlier today, there are fewer people with landlines, and they don't want to be called on their cell phone, so where are you going to find them? They're all on the Internet, right? Yes, so people have the Internet, whether it's on a computer or on a mobile phone. Uh, and uh, so what we do is we get people who are willing to cooperate, mm -hmm. uh, who want to participate in polls, and then we assemble a sample uh, that's representative of the population. Is it easy to get people um, easier if you compare today to back in the day when you did things with, with phone calls? Is it easier to get people to say yes on no, the it's, Internet? No, it's much harder to get people uh, to say yes. Uh, you're asking them to do something that uh, is inconvenient, so we try to make it uh, shorter and uh, less burdensome for them. Um, what about this notion of big data? How does it make polling better? Well, so the idea of big data uh, is really, in our case, interconnected data. Uh, we measure uh, literally thousands of things over time uh, about people. And what that enables us to do is to, cons uh, for any particular poll, put together a set of people who've given consistent answers in the past that uh, predict uh, what the outcome is going to be. Uh, so uh, with big interconnected data, uh, you can predict outcomes better than with small uh, uh, conventional types. Of yeah, I mean, I guess a lot of people would think if you've got big data, it, it must be easier with all these algorithms to, to predict. But how do you get the big data? You know, here in Germany, there's this always this discussion about data um, protection, privacy. It's not that hard in the United States, is it? Well, in America, we have much more relaxed privacy laws, uh, and that allows us to do things uh, with less uh, regulatory interference. Uh, but everything we do is with permission. Yeah. Uh, that uh, the idea is to get pe tell people what you're doing, uh, not make it a mystery, and be uh, upfront with them. 
Uh, but having said that, it's still a small fraction of the population really wants to participate in doing polls. Is it, is it easier to be a, a pollster in the United States than it would be if you were here in Europe because of the data protection yeah, issue? Yeah, absolutely. So in America, we have uh, voter lists that report which people actually voted in which elections. Uh, they give information about them that enables you to identify uh, where they live, the value of their house, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you name it, a whole bunch of things. Um, and in Europe, uh, the privacy protections uh, make it much more difficult to obtain that kind of data. Uh, but we have gotten people to agree uh, to give us access to that information when we explain what we're trying to do. Uh, Doug, would you say your work polling, asking people what they think, what they're going to do, does it make democracy better? Um, we hope so. Uh, we're, uh, you know, we're in the data business, and uh, so the first thing for us is accuracy and giving uh, correct predictions. Um, but over the long run, uh, the the presence of polls uh, means that uh, people in government have a much better idea of what the public thinks. Mm -hmm. um, I think, for example, of gay marriage. Uh, which is an issue on which uh, a decade ago was unthinkable. Barack Obama, for example, ran for president in 2008, opposed to it. Yep. Public opinion moved very quickly, and nobody would have known that if there hadn't been polling. Right, With, and of course, big data helped that. Um, I don't know if you're a betting man, but I know you're a man who does polls, so I'm going to ask you, I'm going to do the Brent Goff, who will be president next poll. Who do you think is going to win in November, and by how much? So... Our polls at the moment show a slight lead for Hillary Clinton, but well within the margin of error. Um, What's your margin of error? Uh, our margin of error is about plus or minus three points. Okay. And we currently have her leading Trump by one point. Ah, uh, so there's still room for things. But if I was going to bet, yeah, uh, that's the, I would put my bet on Hillary becoming the next president. But uh, 45 days is an eternity in politics. That is true. All right, Doug Rivers, the chief scientist at YouGov and a visiting fellow at the American Academy here in Berlin. Doug, thank you very much for taking the time to be on the day. We appreciate it. Thanks.